Hey everyone, welcome back. We are here for CC Cycle One Week 22 Memory Work Ideas. And today for math, we are learning the commutative law for addition and for multiplication. And so I initially learned this to the tune of Mama Love Shortening, Shortening, Shortening. And so we continue to use that same tune to keep it repetitive for all the years. If I can find who originated this using this tune for this uh, law, I will link that in the description below. But here is how it sounds. The commutative law for addition states a plus b equals b plus a. The commutative law for multiplication states a times b equals b times a. A plus b equals b plus a. A times b equals b times a. A plus b equals b plus a. A times b equals b times a. That is the tune and it's pretty catchy. So it helps with remembering another law. Uh, catchy tunes are always great for long formulas like this. In class, I usually print out these, or not print out, I usually use these letter pictures just so that we can show as we're singing the tune, A plus B equals B plus A, A times B equals B times A. And usually I'll have a um, another parent in class hold these or two parents and then they kind of dance around as we sing it or you could just move it with your hands. But the idea is just to show that whether you have A or B in this format or in this format, it's still A and B and so the outcome will be the same. And that's how we cover math. For English, we are moving on to our list of linking verbs. So in week 20, we learned the definition of a linking verb to the tune of Ants Go Marching. And now we're gonna begin our first segment of that entire list of linking verbs. And here's how it sounds all together. So, a linking verb makes an assertion by joining two words. A linking verb makes an assertion by joining two words. Fill, become, remain, taste. And that is the first part of our linking verb song. And for history, we are learning Tell Me About the British North America Act of 1867. So for this, this tune that Cece provides is actually kind of an upbeat rhythm. And it kind of sounds like stomping and clapping, stomping and clapping. So for class, when we review history this week, we are going to start a beat as a whole class. And we're going to stomp together, clap, stomp, clap stomp, clap. And we're going to do that at the same rhythm of the CC tune so that as we sing the tune and memorize it, we will be stomping and clapping as a group. And that just kind of makes it kind of fun because you are having motion and you're creating a beat together and that's just super fun. So simple, but fun. Uh, for Latin, we are going to continue with the same way that we learned the fourth declension, the fourth declension noun endings last week and in the first semester. And so what we do is we break out a four finger choir. Uh, if you have finger pets, you can use them. If not, you can always draw little faces on your fingertips or just use your fingers like this. So we do the four person choir. For the plural, I mean for the singular, we just hold up one four-finger choir and then it we sing the tune that Cece provides as a choir. Okay, so it's uh, us, us, ui, um, u. So we do that. And then for the plural, we do the same thing, except we're singing the plural tune that Cece provides. And instead, we have four or two four-finger choirs. And it's uh, us, um, ibis, us, ibis. And so that is how we cover Latin. For timeline, we are learning about the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. So for that, we're going to do the abbreviations of those words. Usually they are referred to as NATO. So we're going to do N, A, T, and O for NATO. Then we have the Korean War. So we're going to do a K and the sign for war. Then we have Martin Luther King Jr. and the Civil Rights Movement. So we're going to do MLK, M, L, and K. MLK and the Civil Rights Movement. We're going to do the same motion that we have done in the past for Civil Rights Movement, which is to take your hand and go right up and down the middle of your other hand for Civil Rights Movement. Next is Jim and Elizabeth Elliot, Missionaries to Ecuador. So for that, we're going to sign E for their last name, Elliot, and Missionaries they have a heart for the lost. And so we're going to do an M for missionary and we're gonna circle that around our heart, symbolizing 
what they do and reaching everyone around the world. So we have E for Elliot, missionaries to Ecuador. For Ecuador, you just take your hand flat like this and you do another E and you kind of rock that on the top of the flat hand, okay? So Jim Elizabeth Elliot, missionaries to Ecuador. Next we have the Antarctic Treaty and for that we're going to shiver like it's cold because it's cold there. And then we have the Vietnam War, so we do a V and war. And then last but not least, we have U.S. astronauts walk on the moon. So for that one, we are going to do the sign for astronaut, which is a man that is a rocketeer, right? Or a rocket man. So we're going to do a rocket, make an R and shoot that R up like a rocket. And then the sign for person. So rocket person or astronaut. And then you have walks on the moon. And so all together, that's U.S. astronauts walk on the moon. And that's all of our timeline. For geography, we are learning about South America, the West part. We're gonna learn this in our group as a whole for all of South America, and we're going to sing it to the tune of, I think it's called No Pressure or Under Pressure. I'll confirm that in the description below. But it's from the movie Encanto, and, uh, which takes place in Colombia. So it's perfectly fitting that Colombia is part of the section that we're learning today. My kids love this tune. It's kind of a, it gets stuck in your head. And so when I told them that we're gonna do that, they were saying, is it to that song? And they were so excited when we found out. So I'm gonna share that tune here and then we will continue that tune into next week for learning all of South America together. And it sounds like this. South America, Venezuela, Colombia, oh. Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Chile, oh, oh, oh. And then we'll add on to that next week. So, South America, Venezuela, Colombia, oh. Ecuador, Peru, Bolivia, and Chile, oh, oh, oh. And that will be how we cover South America this week. For science, we are going to learn what are some cold fronts or what are some weather fronts. And so I have two different ways to review this in class. I thought that it would be helpful to show kind of some motions that kind of demonstrate what's happening in some of these weather fronts. So that was the first thing that came to mind and probably what we'll do in class. But it looks like this. So we have uh, our cold front, you have your warm air and your cold air. And in the cold front, the cold is coming to the front. It takes over the warm air mass. Then in a warm front, you have your warm air and your cold, but the warm air is taking over. So we move the warm air. So we have cold front, warm front, and then in a stationary, they're both putting pressure to each other, but neither one takes over the other, so it's stationary. So we're gonna go like this for stationary, and then we have occluded, which is where the uh, cold air masses come together, causing a warm air mass to rise, to, to um, lift. So for that, we're going to do our cold and our warm, and in this case, when the cold air comes up, the warm air is going to rise. And so all together, it looks like this. Cold, warm, stationary and occluded. And that is our motions for science. If you don't wanna do it with motions, the other way that I thought would be really fun to review it is to put it to an acronym. And so if you kind of move them out of order just a tad, you can spell the word cows. And so I thought it would be fun to sing it to the tune of Old MacDonald had a farm. And it sounds like this. What are some kinds of weather fronts? Some kinds of weather fronts are Cold, occluded, warm, and stationary. What are some kinds of weather fronts? Some kinds of weather fronts are cold, occluded, warm, and stationary. And I guess you could even do that with the motions if you wanted to. So, uh, cold, warm, occluded, and stationary. That could work. Anyway, that's how we're gonna cover science, and that is all of our memory work for this week. For review today, we are going to do a hopscotch, and well, depending on how the energy level is of the kids, I thought it'd be fun to do hopscotch in class this week to get some of that energy out if we need to. Uh, if not, and things can stay calm, we may just do Play-Doh, where each of the kids can mold on Play-Doh and make some, some different things with their own Play-Doh as I review all the questions from the last four, yeah, last four weeks. So uh, that's how we're gonna do review. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, let me know. 
And otherwise, I am looking forward to seeing you guys back for next week, week 23. Bye.